Um, so yeah, this week, we are not actually going to go through more concept. We'll actually go through chemical formula and questions first. There was the previous topic just before we cover more concept for next week. So it's very important that you have a go at some of these more concept questions before you have the session next week. I already posted the questions on the more concept for next week. Yeah, So uh, do try some of them so that you have the better opportunity to learn from me next week when you get to ask any questions. So what I thought would be quite nice is uh, I already gone through some of these with the previous session with the people from the previous 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock sessions. So I just want to highlight a couple of things as stated in the syllabus, obviously. Okay, straight from my lesson notes, actually. So I haven't given this to you, but uh, you can find the actual lesson, which uh, covered over many, many weeks, which you already had the lesson, obviously, with your teachers from your respective schools. There was some time when you were in year nine, uh, but you can catch my recorded uh, lesson from the lesson playlist, which I usually share in the in the topic by topic uh, classroom materials in the Google Classroom. Okay, so let's just get started. So this is about chemical formula. So what we have here is candidates should be able to state the formula of the elements and the compounds. The subject content was from the covalent bonding topic. The covalent bonding topic was the last thing I talked to you about last week. We did the dot and cross for some of these, but maybe we didn't for all of them. But you should know that, you know, stated in the syllabus, these are the diatomic elements that exist as two atoms bonded together, diatomic elements. We also have this list of compounds which contain two or more elements chemically combined together in a fixed ratio. So these are the typical dot and cross diagram as stated in the covalent bonding in the year nine syllabus. That was the last topic. Make sure you can draw the dot and cross for each and every one that are stated in the syllabus really, okay? Now did you use the formula of a simple compound from however many atoms you have? So count, count the atoms, count the ions, and therefore, what is the formula of that simple compound, whether it is ionic compound or whether it's a simple covalent molecule. The very last thing, deduce the formula of an ionic compound from the charges on the ions. This is deduce. So you got to know the ions. You got to know the ions, whether they are group one or group two or group three ions, whether they are from group five, group six, or group seven ions. And when they combine together, the charges must cancel, positive attract negative, negative attract positive, but the positive charges must cancel negative charges. Ionic compound is a compound. A compound is uncharged, no overall charge, because however many positive charge you have must cancel with however many negative charge you have. And that is why we'll be talking about lowest common multiple. I'm pretty sure all of you have done this from primary school mathematics. The charges must cancel out by this concept of lowest common multiple. How many of each needs to combine so that the charges cancel out? This concept of valency is just a number. How many electrons do you, the metals need to lose in order to get to a fully filled outer shell? Valence there means outermost. How many electrons do the metal need to lose to complete the outer shell? Group one have one outer shell electrons, and that is why you lose the one outer shell electrons and you get the complete outer shell. We talked about it last week, well, sorry, two weeks ago, I think, when we talked about atomic structure and electronic configuration. Lithium will form lithium plus, which has a fully filled outer shell of helium. It doesn't have eight electrons, but it has a fully filled first shell, which, which you know, fills up to two electrons only. Sodium, 281, that will give you Na+, plus, which is 28, and then potassium, 2881, straight from your predict table. K plus is 288. All of them have a fully filled out the shell. Do not forget about helium, the common mistake from last week or two weeks ago. People keep on thinking that you know noble gas have fully filled. Sorry, people keep on thinking incorrectly that noble gases have eight electrons in the outer shell. That is actually a wrong uh, concept. I mean, helium has only two electrons in the outer shell. Now the non-metals, the non-metals can share or they can gain electrons depending on what their partners are. So the group four, like carbon and silicon, they just share electron exclusively most of the time. But group five, group six, and group seven, if their partners are metals, you will get the transfer of electrons from the metal to the non-metal. That is the basis of ionic bonding. That was the basis of what we talked about last week, giant ionic structure. But they could also share electrons when their partner is non-metal, non-metal and non-metal, such as carbon and hydrogen, nitrogen and hydrogen, 
they can combine together to give you covalent bond, simple covalent molecule, or giant covalent structure. Now, in terms of group eight, normal gases, their balance is zero because they just like to exist as a single atom. They don't form any bond whatsoever. And therefore, you know, their balance is zero. They just stay as a single atom. Transition elements are the middle block of the predict table. So, you know, they can have many oxidation number. If you have never done oxidation number, you would have come across this name at least in Roman numerals. The name in the Roman numerals represent the charges on the ions. And we know that transition metals can have different valency because valency depends on the charge of the ions, especially for the cat ions here. You can have ion 2, ion 3, different valency, variable valency, because you know they are transition elements, transition elements, transition metals, every transition element in the predict table, they are all metals there. Now, how non-metals and non-metals combined? I'm just going to show you something here. So carbon, for instance. It's got two four outer shell elect I mean electronic configurations. Hydrogen has got one outer shell electrons, and it's got only one electrons altogether. So what this thing is showing is the valency, meaning the combining power. How many electrons? How many electrons do you need to share? Because this is between non-metal and non-metals in order to complete the outer shell. To complete the outer shell for carbon, you need to share four electrons. In order to complete the outer shell of the hydrogen, you need to share one electrons. So what happened is you exchange the valency and this will give you how many. This is not just true for ionic compound. Oops, what have I done? One goes to the left, four goes to the right. So what that means is how many. So you got one carbon and you got four hydrogen like that. Therefore, you have CH4 as your uh, molecular formula. Some people thought the crisscross is just for ionic compounds. It also works for covalent compound because we are just exchanging the valency. How many electrons do you need to share between the nonmetals to get up to the complete outer shell? And that's how you get the formula there. For example, sulfur and hydrogen. Sulfur is in group six, and therefore you just need two more electrons to share with the hydrogen to complete your outer shell. Hydrogen has only one outer shell electrons. You only need to share one electron to complete your outer shell. So this is what you call valency, the combining power for the nonmetals and nonmetals. How many electrons do you need to share to complete your outer shell? So when we do the crisscross, we are not talking about the ions. We're talking about the combining power. You need one sulfur. You need two hydrogen. So that you have SH2, which is the same as H2S. And guess what? Sulfur is below oxygen in your group six. You have H2O. You have H2S because they behave similarly. And I was wrong. Sulfur is not 2,6. Sulfur is 286. It is oxygen. That is 26 electronic configuration there. So be very careful and think about these things. Now, these are lists of cations and anions. I'm sure in school your teacher would have given you this table. Could be in different order, uh, could be in different format, but you know this table is everything that you must remember. For example, ammonium ion, people always confuse ammonium and ammonia. Ammonia is a molecule. Ammonia is a molecule from your covalent bonding topic. You have nitrogen, dot cross hydrogen, ammonia molecule. There is no charge in the molecule. There is a charge on ammonium ion. This is pronounced NH4 plus. There is four hydrogen. There's a plus one charge. This is a one of the difficult ones to remember, but it's also in your paper three practical study. When you're given two pages, they always refer to for cations, the test for anion, the test for gases. But guess what? Because of COVID, people are less likely to be doing practical these days, and more schools are moving to alternative to practical. In an alternative to practical, which means it's not paper three, it's not practical, guess what? You will never, ever be given the two pages test. Never, ever. Not in theory, paper one, paper two, or paper four. Never, ever. If you forget the formula of ions, that's it. Game over. If you don't know the test for the specific cation and anion, game over. Because you do not have the paper three two pages test, you have to remember them. They are part of your theory. In your paper three, the two pages test, these are the list of polyatomic anion, carbonate, test for carbonate is in there, test for nitrate is in there, test for sulfur is in there. And this thing, sulfite, is not in the practical test. However, I dare you to look in your to look in your theory syllabus under chemical analysis, experimental techniques and chemical analysis of the cations and anions, it is there. The sulfide is SO3 to minus is in the theory paper. If you're not doing paper three, 
doesn't matter. This is in the theory paper syllabus, which means they will come out. So you must know the difference between the ATE, the ITE, and the IDE. This all comes down to spelling. If you spell incorrectly, there will be no turning back from you. Grammar mistakes are tolerated, but spelling mistake for the ions for this species will never be tolerated at all in chemistry, just so you're aware. These are group one metal. As I showed you earlier, the group one metal loses the one outer shell electrons. All of them form a plus one cations for the group one metal cations. The group two have two outer shell electrons that form two, uh, two plus cations. The group three have uh, three valence electrons for aluminum, which is a metal, it will form a three plus cation. Transition elements, variable oxidation numbers. The group seven halogen atom has seven outer shell electrons. They want to gain one electron to complete the outer shell. Each of these is a minus one anion. The group six nonmetal will want to gain two electrons to complete the outer shell, especially when their partner is a metal. The metal will lose the electrons transferred to the nonmetals. That is the basis of ionic bonding. And of course, the group five nitrogen and phosphorus, five valence electrons, they want to gain three electrons to complete the outer shell to have fully fill out the shell there. Can't really help you with this formula of polyatomic ions. You have to commit yourself to remembering how many oxygen, how many carbon, and what is the charge, as well as the name. You have to practice it until you're so good at it. If you're not very good at it in year nine, this is the time for you to really be good at it. Otherwise, going forward, you will find it very difficult to do chemistry. I'm just going to show you a couple of things. Based on what I said earlier, I showed you for covalent compounds. Now I'm going to show you for ionic compounds. This is metal cations. This is non-metal anion. I label this as valency. The valency of the cation follows the charge on the cations. The valency of the non-metal anion follows the charge there, which is minus one. The value is one. So the combining power is like that. I do this thing called the crisscross. You would call it cross multiply, or I don't know. I don't know what your teacher call it, but you have seen it in textbook and stuff. When you are doing this, you are essentially doing lowest common multiply, which is your primary school mathematics, whether you realize it or not. You are trying to cancel out the charges. You want to cancel out the charges. Where do they meet? Well, they meet when you have the lowest common multiple. When you have LCM of two and one, the LCM is just two. So for two plus to become two, you need to multiply by one. For one minus one to become two, you need to multiply by two. You need to have two of that. That is why the label for the next one is called how many. The crisscrossing, the cross multiply of this valence C, the combining power, is what you call lowest common multiple. Lowest common multiple is your primary school mathematics. The one there means you have one. How many? One of these things, so then two plus. The two there means you have two of this Cl minus. So Cl minus, Cl minus, your formula is going to be ZnCl2, like that. If we try the next one, sodium sulfate, the valency based on the charge, here is plus one, so it's one. Here is minus two, so it's two. When we do the crisscross, we're going to get two and one. This tells us how many. You must have done this quite a lot in year nine. If you haven't, well, when I post this up, you can, you know, uh, you can try some more of these and you can correlate it. You can check it with the lesson tutorial, uh, which I have on the playlist, which I always share in the topic uh, on the Google Classroom itself. Okay. So that means I need two of that NA and I have one of that sulfate. These polyatomic anions become tricky when you have to use bracket like this. So this is about the valency. I always try to label because I'm easily confused. If I'm easily confused, I will make a mistake. So the two goes there, the three goes there. What does that mean? That means I have two of that things on the left and three of that things on the right. If you compare their charges, if you compare their charges, plus three and plus three give you plus six. Minus two, minus two and minus two give you minus six. Overall, the charges of the cation cancel out the charges of the anion. This is called ionic compound. Ionic compound does not have any charge because the charges cancel out. Two of the aluminum, three of the sulfate. So make sure you use bracket three of the sulfate like that. So that means three sulfur, 12 oxygen. One, two, three sulfur, four, four, four. So 12 oxygen altogether. I'm going to show you this last one here. So the iron two plus, it's a transition metal. We follow from the name itself. So the valency is two. 
the valency is two for the sulfate following the minus two charge there. In terms of how many, we will do the crisscross or the exchange of the valency, or you will call just cross multiply from whatever your school teacher will teach you. You might think it's Fe2, SO4 twice, and this is wrong because you know how to do lowest common multiple in your primary school. The lowest common multiple of two and two is just two. So if you have two already, how do you get to two? You just need one of it. If you already have two minus, how do you get to two? You just need one of it. So two of them is wrong because these are not the simplest whole number ratio. You know about whole number as well. You know about simplest whole number ratio from your primary school mathematics when you did PSR math. You know PSR math taught you better than that. You should know that this is now the simplest whole number ratio. Fe2 plus, the plus two cancel out minus two like that. That's why I don't need two of them like that. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. The correct formula will be FES of four. Now this next one is about formula and equations, which is basically the, the, the contents that I'm covering with you today with that list of questions. Construct word equations using words. Using symbol, they almost never ever say balance, but if you try to write something which is not balanced in all level chemistry, you will not get the marks. You will automatically lose the mark. The same thing goes for ionic equations. We don't show the spectator ions. If you don't know anything about spectator ions, I think you should go back to year nine and read up on ionic equations, okay? Now you gotta use that symbols correctly. Solid, liquid, gas, aqueous. These are matter. These are pure substance. These are pure matter. When you have a mixture, you have something dissolved in water, for example, that is going to be called aqueous solution. Aqueous solution means dissolved in water. Now there are a couple of common acids. You gotta know your formula of common acids. Three of the most common one, HCl, H2SO4 and HNO3. So what happened there is that, you know, you get Cl minus, which is called chloride salt, sulfate salt, nitrate salt, like that. This salt is sulfate SO4 to minus coming from H2SO4 because the acid is served, you have two of it. So the remaining sulfate must be two minus charge because you have two of that plus two. The next thing I want to talk about is this hydrogen chloride versus hydrochloric acid. This is what diffuse as a gas. The HCl aqueous does not diffuse. Diffusion, kinetic particle theory, topic number one, states of matter, common things to us. This thing would, would you know, is volatile as a hydrogen chloride, simple covalent molecule. So pretty low melting and boiling point because of the simple covalent structure. Is this HCl gas, this is a dot and cross. This thing cannot conduct electricity, but you know it will dissolve in water, and it will give you hydrochloric acid, which can conduct electricity. These are commonly asked in, in exam as well. So make sure you know the difference between the molecule and the ionic form there. Oops, sorry. Now this thing, this is the very last thing I'll do with you uh, as part of the, the theoretical bit. So this is the five general equations. A lot of students, they don't even know about these five general equations, which is a bit sad, yeah, okay? You would have been in year 10, so towards the middle or the end of year 10, you have come across something called chemistry of metals. Metal can react with water. You get metal hydroxide, which is alkaline or basic. The pH is going to be above seven. Hydroxide is something that has OH minus. This will give you pH greater than seven. It's alkaline, it's basic. But you also produce hydrogen gas. Now, these are reactions of acid. If you have come across acid bases and salts topic, you will have come across these general questions. Acids react with metal to give you salt. The salt you get, as I mentioned previously, depends on the acid. Hydrochloric acid gives you chloride salt. Sulfuric acid gives you sulfate salt. Nitric acid gives you nitrate salt. The difference between these two reactions is this has got carbonate. Carbonate is an anion from your paper tree the two pages test for ions, which unfortunately you will not be given these in the theory paper. You gotta know the formula. Now this is metal as an element. So it's not cationic, it's element. Now here you get hydrogen gas, here you get carbon dioxide gas. The test for carbon dioxide gas turns lime water milky. Hydrogen gas will burn, uh, will extinguish, will extinguish a lighted split with a pop sound. So use a lighted or a burning split, it will burn with a pop sound. The acid and base is your classic neutralization. The acid gives you H plus, pH lesser than seven. The base gives you OH minus, the hydroxide ion, pH above seven. Water, pH seven, 
So they get neutralized. H plus from any acid or H minus from any base give you water. This is ionic equation. Earlier, candidates should be able to write ionic equations for whatever reaction they want you to write, such as neutralization, H plus aqueous, OH minus aqueous, recombined H2 or liquid there. Now this is, this is an ammonium salt plus base, metal salt, ammonia, and water. This is actually the test for ammonium ions in the school laboratory. Your paper three, two pages test. Under the test for cations, there is the test for NH4+. Plus. And when you react NH4+, plus with some sodium hydroxide or any hydroxide, which is a base, any base is a hydroxide. Well, actually, a base that dissolves in water will give you hydroxide. So this thing with hydroxide, you heat it up, you will get ammonia because this will release the H+, plus. it will give out the H+, plus. it will donate the H+, plus. it's acting as an acid. This is in your acid topic, proton donor, H+, plus donor is an acid. OH-, minus, just like in the neutralization, it will accept the H+, plus. it will take away the H+, plus, and therefore it's acting as a base. OH-, minus, take away the H+, plus, form water, just like neutralization. This loses the H+, plus. now it becomes one lesser hydrogen, and loses the plus, it's now ammonia gas, and test for gases. Two pages test for cations, anion, gases. They are all in your qualitative analysis notes, but they will never ever be given in your theory paper except in paper three, which you might not do, you know, this year or next year as a result of COVID. So get to know your test for gas. Ammonia smells pungent, very bad smell. It turns red lemon paper blue. It's an alkaline gas. It turns red lemon paper blue. Now what I'm going to do for the rest of this uh, session is here we have around 20, around, around half an hour, uh, just over half an hour. We're going to go through these two sections, uh, first of which is these chemical uh, equations. So this is a paper one series of questions. So you, you should have gone through these particular questions because I have posted this a week in advance. You're not going to learn much from me if you rely everything on me. Okay, I'm just a tutor. Okay, I'm not your, I'm not your original teacher. The other thing is, this is paper two on chemical formula equations. So within this series of questions, um, it is your responsibility to have done some of them and to ask me whatever you want me to go through, depending on what you don't know or what you know how to do. For next week, we are going to go through this concept called more concept. It's a huge topic, a lot of calculations. You cannot expect to come into next week and just, you know, uh, I don't know, I don't know, okay? I already posted the more concept on the Google Classroom, both the paper two, as well as the paper one. Oops, sorry, not that. As well as the paper one for the more concept. Have a look through that uh, before the session next week and you can ask me to go through anything you want me to go through. All of these are year night stuff. So, you know, uh, should be pretty straightforward. So I will go through chemical formula equations today. So just feel free to ask me to go through whichever one you want me to go through. Actually, we should probably take attendance first. So there are five participants, Ooh, only five participants. That's all right, no worries. Let's all just turn on our camera and we'll just take a quick uh, attendance photo. Okay, smile, one, two, three. All right, cool. Let's take another one, one, two, three. Okay, feel free to turn off the camera now. Let's just continue what we were doing, which were on questions. So which question do you want me to go through? It's very important the questions come from you because you know, I can answer any questions you want me to go through, but very important that you tell me uh, what sort of thing you want me to go through. So you have the question paper, right? So uh, yeah, that's why it's very difficult. You know, like you, you're viewing this on the screen and you have to open the question paper. It's very important that you have gone through before, then you can tell me which question you want me to go through. It's much easier that way. But anyway, uh, I'm all yours. So admit yourself and tell me which one you want me to go through. Paper one, paper two, which questions? Paper two. Which question? November 2009, eight, November 2009, A3. Okay, cool. All right, now, what do we have here? 
So blah, blah, blah. Argon is using the manufacture of titanium. So do not hesitate when you read questions. Do not hesitate to uh, annotate, meaning write out or scribble or underline or circle so that you, know, you, are, you understand the question better. Titanium 4 chloride. So we know that there is titanium 4 plus and Cl minus. We are given the formula. This thing is called reduce. We reduce it with hot sodium. They say write an equation. They don't say stat symbol. So I don't need to write stat symbol. So titanium, TiCl4 plus sodium. Sodium there is an element. So it's a metal. So that means we don't, we don't put an A plus in there. It's just an A. When they react together, I get titanium as an element. This is titanium as a metal. Titanium is in the middle block of the predict table. It's a transition. It's a transition metal. It's a transition element. So as an element, it does not have any charge. It's not Ti2 or anything because it's not a molecule. And then you're going to get sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, Na plus for group one metal, cations, non-metal, the chlorines will have just gained one electron to give you uh, a fully filled out the shell. Na plus, your minus, plus one, cancel minus one, you just need one of each. Now I'm gonna balance the equation. If you write this, you automatically get zero. You know how to read question, but they didn't say balance. But you know, the standard in all level chemistry onward is that whatever you write has to be balanced. Whatever you write has to be balanced. Now there are four chlorine atom there, so you must have four there. Now there are four sodium, I must have four there. One titanium, one titanium, four chlorine, four chlorine, four times one is four chlorine atom, the four chlorine there. Four sodium, four sodium. So this equation is balanced, and you should be able to get this in one minute. One minute for one mark. Okay. Now the next question is asking you on uh, empirical formula. Okay, before you do this, you must know that in year nine, they expect you, they expect the definition. Now, the definition of empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio. You should have kept a book or a small book where you write down all the definition, as I mentioned previously, all those proton number, nuclear number, uh, empirical formula, relative atomic mass, etc., etc. All the simple, simple things you want to score your definition. So they might not ask you on definition, but you got to know the definition uh, in, order to, in order to try and, and get the question correct, okay? Simplest whole number ratio of atoms. Now this is very important because it said of atoms in the definition. So if I have xenon and I have oxygen and fluorine, I do not write the O2 and F2 because of the definition. Definition of empirical formula, simplest whole number ratio of atoms. Therefore, it's not molecule, it's atoms. So be very careful, all right? So now I have the mass. So the mass is 9.825 gram and 1.200 gram and 5.700 gram. So I'm going to remove the two there, yeah? Okay, so you all know that that one is wrong already because of the simplest whole number ratio of atoms. Now the mole there is going to be mass over AR. This is from the periodic table. And this one is of the atoms. Why? Because of the definition, simplest whole number ratio of atoms. So here, I go straight to my predict table. So where is my predict table? Uh, just give me a minute. You should have a predict table in a calculator next to you as well, yeah? No point listening to me if, if you are not doing. So I think it's 131, um, and then this is 1.200. This is divided by 16, because we are talking about atom, not molecule. Be very careful, yeah? Atom, not molecule because it's the simplest whole number ratio of atoms. So this is divided by 19. So press your calculator and I get 0 0.075 mole, 1.200 divided by 16. Again, I get 0 0.075 mole and I get 0 0.3 mole here. This is mole, these are mole. Now I want to have the simplest whole number ratio, whole number ratio. So to get the whole number ratio, I divide by the smallest number. This is something you would have done in year nine as well. For this simple three marks, you really don't want to lose any mark at all. The smallest number is 0 0.075 that divide by itself, just give me one. 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.075, that give me four. Now this is whole number, whole number and whole number. So the empirical formula, I have already just obtained just like that in well hopefully in three minutes okay because there's x e o f4 just like that you get the three marks there hopefully that makes sense there okay any other question paper one paper two
Any other questions? Feel free to just ask. I've got one person who just joined in a bit late, right? Who was that? Who has just joined in? Was it you? Me, sir. Okay. okay. Yeah, husband. Okay, so whatever you Sorry, missed out, you, no, it's all right. Whatever you missed out, you just watch the recording from earlier, yeah? Okay. I mean, like, okay. I will. I'll, okay. I'll, okay. All right. Any other question, guys? I'm here for the next half an hour. So, do, uh -huh. November 2012, BA. November 2012. So that's further down. November 2012, BA. Okay. Now, this one is working backwards. You need to be able to work backwards. Okay, just now in that table, I did show you phosphate, the name phosphate itself. If you know it, you should be fine. Okay, they want the charge. They don't want the formula. Be very careful. Read the question. Do not give the formula. Give the charge. It has to be minus three. And that is because I know it's PO43 minus. How in the world do I know that? Well, calcium. Calcium is a group two metal, 2882. So this is the balance shell. So when group two metal, form cation, it has to be calcium 2 plus by losing two outer shell electrons, and we get calcium 2 plus fully filled outer shell. Calcium 2 plus, LCM, how many of it do you have? You have three of it. How many do you have? You have three of it. How many phosphate do you have? PO4, X minus, PO4, X minus, because you have two of it. Plus two, plus two, plus two is plus six. X minus, X minus, or minus x minus x is going to be minus 2x. Okay, minus 2x. So we know that the charges must cancel out. So plus 6 minus 2x must be 0 because ionic compound overall has no charge. So 2x is 6. x is 3. So it must be 3 minus. It must be minus because this is cationic. This must be anionic. Do I really have to do all this? Probably not for that one mark. But I must be able to get it that when I have plus 6, I must distribute minus 6 between two anion, it has to be minus three and minus three, and they give me minus six to cancel out the plus six there. Or I must know phosphate. Phosphate comes from phosphoric acid. This is called phosphoric acid, and you will learn phosphoric acid in organic chemistry. It's one of the uh, reagents for one of the reactions in organic chemistry later on. If you know phosphoric acid, H plus, you need three of that. Therefore, the PO4 must be three minus. Phosphate is three minus. Okay, hopefully that makes sense there. All right, any other question? People can ask as many questions as you want. If people keep quiet, then just ask your question. I'm here for you. Any other questions? Um, paper 2, November 2014. B7 and A1. B7 and also A1. Okay. Uh, let's go through B7 first. So you see that you know in the whole paper, they break it down into different different parts of the question, right? That's because formula and equations, they are part of they are part of chemistry. You cannot, you cannot run away from it. Okay. So let's read the question. Hydrogen cyanide reacts with calcium hydroxide. So we know about uh we know about the cyanide, Cn minus. Hydrogen cyanide. So Cn minus and H plus, when hydrogen combined with this, they have to be, they have to be of the opposite charge. So one and one, there is the valency based on the charges. Hydrogen only has one after shell electrons. So hydrogen form the hydrogen ions, which could be H plus or H minus. Minus is not going to combine with minus, has to be the H plus, they combine with that. When you do the crisscross one and one, you can hopefully see that you obviously have one of each. So the hydrogen cyanide is going to be HCN. Calcium hydroxide. Now, this is a tricky one. Not really tricky, but you know, students always get tricked. The valency is two and one. Hydroxide, OH minus. This is called valency. How many do you have? How many do you have? So you exchange the valency, become one and two. So I have one Ca2 plus. I have two of that. So OH minus, OH minus. When you write it out like this, you can see. You can see for yourself, there are two oxygen and there are two hydrogen. The most common mistake people make is people write like this. 
that is very, very wrong. Very, very wrong. Okay. Now, calcium cyanide, Ca2 plus, and then Cn minus, according to the question Cn minus. Two and one. Follow the charges. This is called valency. Valency. So, how many? Well, I'm going to exchange the ion as well. So, one and two. So, I get calcium two plus, Cn minus, Cn minus. So, that again gives me something similar, Ca, Cn twice. There are two of that Cn, so Ca bracket Cn twice. Now I'm ready to write my balance equation. HCN plus calcium hydroxide. That gave me calcium cyanide plus water. Now the CN minus come from the HCN. If I have two of that CN, two of that CN, so what do I do? I must have two of the HCN. The two hydrogen there give me the two hydrogen. The two oxygen there give me one oxygen. So two oxygens two oxygen, so I don't put the two there. Instead, I must have the two in front of the H2O. Now I have four hydrogen, two hydrogen there, two times one, but I have another two hydrogen, two hydrogen, two hydrogen, four hydrogen on the left, two times two, four hydrogen on the right. Two oxygen, two times one, two oxygen, two times one. This equation is balanced now. Now the next thing is arsenic. Arsenic is this AS, it's just in group five, so arsenic as an element reacts with oxygen. Oxygen as an element, group six element oxygen, it exists as this diatomic molecule. Just now was the simplest whole number ratio of atoms, but this is as an element that exists as diatomic molecule as an element. As you know, the dot and cross from your group six chemistry, as well as from your dot and cross from covalent, uh, covalent bonding. So AS plus O2 give you AS2O3. Personally, okay, personally, this is what I would do. Two arsenic, two arsenic because there is one in front. Three oxygen, we need three oxygen atoms. Now, some students decided to change these two to become three. That is wrong because this is oxygen molecule. We cannot change the number at the bottom, but I need three. So something, something times two because I have two oxygen atoms, something times two must give me three. So something must be three divided by two. So I could do three over two. Now, some people really, really don't like fraction. I don't understand why, because three over two times two give me three. And I need three oxygen atom, three oxygen atom that is balanced. I'll tell you what, this is correct, but you can also multiply by two both side because some people cannot stand fraction. When you multiply by two both side, you get four arsenic, three or two, two AS2 or three. That is also correct. You can multiply by three and it will also be correct. You can multiply by four is also correct because balance equation is just a symbolic representation of what actually happened in reality. Okay, You might not have come across fraction that often because your teacher might not teach you that much, but I said teach you about fraction that much. But then I can tell you both of these would be correct. I just like to use fraction because I want to balance it with the smallest number possible to make it easy for me to count. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, any other question, guys? Are you okay with empirical and molecular formula calculations? There are quite a few questions on empirical and molecular formula. Uh, this one is empirical formula. I wonder if there's something else on molecular formula. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, someone, someone from the other session asked me to go through this just now. Uh, so uh, I guess probably if you want me to go through this again, it's probably worth it for you to watch the recording for the earlier session later on. And you can see how I actually covered this question with the other class. Relative formula mass is basically MR. So this is the MR for the whole thing. Looks complicated, but do it one by one. I combine, I total up the number of carbon atom first, then the hydrogen atom, then the oxygen atom. Then I multiply by two. Everything in this bracket multiplied by two, but I still have two outside. Therefore, I multiply the whole thing by two. Then I go to my predict table and sum up, total up the relative atomic mass for that, plus that, plus 18, which is the MR for H2O times X, give me the total thing and find X. Shouldn't be that bad, I think. Any other questions that you want me to go through? It is, could be paper one or paper two, doesn't matter. Come on, we have like 15, 15, 20 minutes. I should really make you do some of these work, yeah? Perhaps some of the more calculations, you should do them and submit it. 
before the class next week because you haven't really done any work at all, right, for chemistry. So perhaps you should do some of the more calculation work and submit them next week. Some of them, not all of them. Any other questions for this, uh, for this topic on chemical formula and equations? People are probably aware already. I'm not sure. Uh huh. June Oh, sorry. There were two voices speaking. Uh, can can the what was it? June two thousand fifteen was it? Two thousand thirteen. June two thousand thirteen. June two thousand thirteen. A five. Okay. So this one is, this one is empirical formula. Empirical formula. Okay. So this one is empirical formula because it's the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms. Now what you do, I'm surprised that it is only one mark though. Usually empirical formula is usually uh, quite worth a few marks here. Yeah? So oxygen and vanadium. So what I do is I calculate the mole. Remember that it's of the atoms, simplest whole number ratio of the atom. So simplest whole number ratio of the atoms. So that is 3.40 divided by one, not divided by two because it's atom, 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 atom. So this one is 12.0 divided by 14.0, 41.0 divided by 16.0, 43.6 divided by, well, this one you have to go to the data booklet and vanadium. Vanadium is next to titanium. It's in the first row of the periodic table. Sorry, not the first row, the first row of the transition metal in the middle block. So there's 51. So that gave me 3.40. The second one gave me 0.857. 41 divided by 16. This gave me 2.56. And last but not least, this gave me 0 0.85. Well, F55. I can see the smallest number is this 0 0.855. So I divide by 0 0.855 all side. So 3.40 divided by 8.55. And I get 3.97. So that is more slightly four. And then this one divided by roughly itself is going to give me one. I know it's not itself, but it's very close. It will give me one. This will give me one. 2.56 divided by 0 0.855. I get 2.99, which is three. So therefore there will be vanadium. Well, there will be H4. Well, basically you can see that already. H4, N1, O3, and vanadium. Sean, I'm pretty sure the original question is not one mark. I think the original question was worth two or three marks. Now. Okay, I think it was just the, the person who typed out this question uh, got the total marks wrong. There were two voices just now, so I already gone through this question. Who was the other one who said she wanted me to go through another question? What was the other question? June 2015 June 2015 A3, yeah? This one, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Now, this is phosphorus. Now, so far, I've only done empirical formula. I haven't done molecular formula. So, empirical formula, we know. Empirical formula is a simplest whole number ratio of atoms. Molecular formula is a two-mark definition. It's the actual number of atoms. Like I said earlier, you need to have a book where you write down your definition. Actual number of atoms in one single molecule. So this second bit is very important in one single molecule. So that means whenever we talk about molecular formula, we are talking about simple covalent structure because only simple covalent structure, they can have individual single molecules. So what we have here is the MR of the molecule is one, two, four. So for, for, the, for the phosphorus, the empirical formula is just phosphorus because it's just phosphorus like that. The question is, now they say it's one to four, from your periodic table is 31. So for one phosphorus is 31. There's a general formula. So the MR of the empirical formula. So the simplest ratio, yeah? Okay, multiply by a factor. We don't know what the factor is. This is multiplied by a factor. That will give you the MR of the molecular formula. The factor will tell you how many times do you need to multiply the empirical formula to get the molecular formula. MR. Okay, we're talking about the masses. So here you have one, two, four. So we don't know about the factor, but we know the empirical formula phosphorus, just phosphorus on its own as an element, is 31 from the predict table. 
So what is the factor there? There's one, two, four divided by 31. There's four of it. Now this is a factor. It's not a formula. Be very careful. Factor will not give you the molecular formula. Instead, what you need to do is take the empirical formula and then multiply it by that. Here is easy because it's just phosphorus. We should try another question where it's got carbon and hydrogen and nitrogen and etc. Cetera, et cetera. So this is P4 molecule. The molecular formula is P4. The formula is P4. The factor was four. It's four times the empirical formula. If you do four times 31, you get the mass of one, two, four. So hopefully that makes sense then. In terms of the part F, just to complete this question, the phosphine, this question is incomplete actually. Phosphine, if you read through the whole question for that question, there's A and B and C at the start of the question. Phosphine is pH3. pH3 ignites in A. A consists of oxygen and nitrogen. Nitrogen around 78%, around 21% oxygen. And that is why you get the oxygen here, the oxide. Phosphorus 5 oxide. Now I'm going to ask someone, can someone tell me the formula for phosphorus 5 oxide? Let me ask, oh, I don't know, Nazira, are you there? Is Nazira there? Yes. Okay, what's the formula for phosphorus 5 oxide? Phosphorus 5 oxide. So phosphorus, mm -hmm. phosphorus 5 oxide. So the five there is the oxidation number. So there's like five and two. But then that is to do with the valency. That's to do with the valency. So here the phosphorus is five because of that. The two is because oxygen needs to share two electrons to complete the outer shell. So we exchange the valency and this will tell us how many. So how many of it? And therefore, what is the molecular formula for phosphorus five oxide? Phosphorus. Well, the formula. The formula doesn't have phosphorus. The formula has the chemical symbol. So after we determine how many, it means phosphorus and phosphorus. It means oxygen, 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 oxygen. So how many phosphorus do we have? Two. How many oxygen? Uh -huh. Two. Oxygen, five. So it's called P2O5. So what you get is P2O5. In reality, you could get P2O5. This is empirical, actually. In reality, the molecular formula is not P2O5. The actual number of atoms is actually P4 or 10. Okay, but it doesn't matter. We can balance our equation with this. So P2O5 and water. So we just need to balance our equations. So two phosphorus, so two pH3. And what else have we got? Two times three is six hydrogen. So no hydrogen. So I need six hydrogen. Cannot change that number. So this is three times two, which is six hydrogen. Five oxygen plus three oxygen is eight oxygen atoms. Cannot change this molecule. I need eight oxygen atoms. So for that. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I think we should do one more question on empirical and molecular formula, but not something simple. We should choose one that involves uh, organic compounds. Let me try and find one because I did one with the other with the other session this morning. And that was actually quite nice to complete this uh, idea on empirical and molecular formula. Hang on now, let me just find one for you. So this is empirical formula. I'm sure you can do empirical formula now. It's when question asks you empirical and then molecular formula, you might not be able to do. As I did mention, empirical formula usually is worth three marks. Yang, just now, Yang Tadi, there was one which asked for vanadium, something, something, should be three marks as well. So, you know, usually it's worth two to three marks. Make sure you can score, yeah? Uh, empirical formula again, they should be worth two or three marks. Uh, hang on, uh, just give me a minute. Yeah? I know you might have questions, but let me just go through this uh, molecular formula thing. Ah, this is a good one. Now here, they ask you empirical formula, deduce it okay, for three marks. And then one mark, deduce the molecular formula. So there are two bits to this question. Make sure you answer everything. To get the molecular formula, you must have the relative molecular mass, MR. MR is basically the sum, the sum of all the relative atomic masses. But that is only possible if you have the molecular formula, the actual number of atoms. And that is why you can get the molecular formula if you have the relative molecular mass and if you have the empirical formula. I'm just gonna very quickly show you the empirical formula. So 2.67 carbon and this much hydrogen and this much oxygen. 
This is about atoms, so carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So 2.67 divided by 12. This is mole, mole of the atoms. And that is why we have 0 0.220 divided by one of the atom, simplest whole number ratio of the atom, and something divided by 16 for the oxygen then. The space given there is not much, but in the real exam, there should be uh, quite a big space, yeah? I mean, for a three mark question. So 7.11 divided by 16. I'm sure you know how to do empirical formula already by now. I just want to show you how to get to the, so I have to use a little bit of space at the bottom, yeah? Uh, so you will, you will typically continue your working like that, divided by the smallest number, which is 0 0.220. This thing is very similar to that. Your calculator will show you that it's roughly one. And then this is exactly one because I divide by itself. And this thing will give you roughly two and not exactly two. So what we get is our empirical formula is going to be C1, H1, O2. This is empirical formula. Now, the next thing is based on what I said, the MR of the empirical formula, so your simplest whole number ratio of atoms, multiplied by a factor, this will give you the MR of the molecular formula. MR, not just the molecular formula. Now, I need to find the MR of the empirical formula. There is one carbon, so there is 12. So the MR of CHO2, there is 12 times 1 for the one carbon. There is 1 times 1 for the hydrogen, 16 times 2 for the two oxygen. This gave me 45. So that is 45. I multiply by a factor and I get 90 because 90 is the MR for the relative molecular mass for one whole molecule. So I can see my factor here is 90 divided by 45, which is two. Now, a lot of students, they stop here and that is their mistake. Molecular formula is not a number. A number is not a molecular formula. So what is the molecular formula? The molecular formula is going to be how many times of that empirical formula? This is empirical formula. How many times do you need to multiply? So I multiply by two because the factor is two for me to bring up the MR of the empirical formula to that of the molecular formula. So the whole bracket two means here is one carbon, one times two is two carbon, and then one hydrogen, one times two is two hydrogens. I have two oxygen inside, two times two is four oxygen. Now you can press your calculator, two oxygen, uh, sorry, two carbon, two times 12 for the mass of the carbon, plus two times one for the two hydrogen, plus four times 16 for the four oxygen, and you get 90. This is correct for molecular formula. Molecular formula, empirical formula, simplest whole number ratio of atoms. This one is actual number of atoms in one single molecule, okay? Okay, now back to your questions. We we'll probably have time for one or two more questions. All right, any other questions? Come on. No questions? No questions? I would like to. Mm -hmm. June yeah. 2012, A4. All right, this will be the last thing I do with you. June 2012, A4. Mm, hang on, yeah. June 2012, A4. Okay, this is nitrogen monoxide. Mono means one oxygen. And then you react, oop, hang on. You form it, form. So this is product. So you get nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen exists as a diatomic molecule. As you know, you know, nitrogen atom doesn't have a completely filled outer shell. And this is straight from your covalent bonding topic. Oxygen, earlier I showed you already, so I'm not gonna show you again. You write this, ooh, you will not gonna get the mark because equation is not balanced. Some people, they write like this, N plus O give you N O. Wow, okay, that is completely wrong. Be very careful, completely wrong, not diatomic, okay? Now, the next one, when coal nitrogen monoxide comes into contact with oxygen, it forms. So NO2 is the product. So these are the reactant. Reactant means the stuff that react. So NO with the monoxide and then O2, they're going to give you NO2. When you write something like this and you leave it like that, you are not going to get the marks. Everything must be balanced. One nitrogen, one nitrogen. Two oxygen atoms, one plus two is three. So I just need one oxygen atom. I just need one oxygen atom for that O2. I cannot change the identity. I can put a half. Half times two is one. So one oxygen atom plus one is two. Now, again, as I mentioned, some people really don't like fractions. 
what you could do is you could also give the other one ways multiply by two. So that plus that give you two and a two. This is also correct as well. The very last one, the gases, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is flu gas desulfurization. If you have done contact process, this is part of the thing in your notes, yeah? So flu gas means removal, removal of the sulfur. Uh, remove about 99% of the nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide. So this is your reactant. You are removing it. How do you remove it? You react it, you react it. NO2 plus SO2, they react with water. Hang on, do I want everything? They want, they want the gases with water to form aqueous acid. Nitrogen dioxide. Okay, so I guess I'm just talking about nitrogen dioxide plus water. They form nitric acid. Nitric acid is your common acid, HNO3, and this is HNO2. NO2 minus, that is actually nitrite. NO3 minus, that's nitrate. So be careful. Let's just balance our equation for that one mark. So two nitrogen, there is one nitrogen and two nitrogen. So two NO2 and four oxygen. Four oxygen, two times two is four, plus one is five, three plus two is five there, and two hydrogen, one and one. So this equation is balanced as well. Okay, all good. Now, before I go, I really want to show you something so that you can do this better for next week, okay? If I don't have time to go through this, can you please make sure you watch the very last section uh, for the last tutorial session for, for the uh, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock session. So they'll be uploaded as well. So catch that session. I went through these questions and I went through these questions and I show and I show how to use the mole ratio method. Okay. I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you, for example, in this mole ratio method. Okay, this is one mole reacting with two moles. Your teacher would have taught you using the different different method. I'm just showing you a different method. Now, this is solution chemistry, like in titration. In solution chemistry, we had n equal to C V. This is concentrations in mole per dm cube. This is volume in dm cube. This is volume of solution, not gas, yeah? Not gas. Gas will have different mole equation. Gas will be volume of gas divided by the molar volume of gas, which is 24 dm cube per mole. This is volume of gas in dm cube. So that one is another, another thing for gas. And you also have mass of an MR, this is for reacting masses when you have masses. Here we're exclusively talking about CV. Do make sure you catch that uh, earlier bit of the, sorry, that last bit of the previous tutorial session with the other, with the other group of students, yeah, so that you are not missing much because you'll be expected to do some of these calculations uh, in preparation for next week's tutorial. I'll just show you what I'm talking about. I want to find, I want to find the calcium hydroxide. I want to find this. I have the information on the HCl. I have the concentration of the HCl. I have the hydrochloric acid volume. I have the HCl. I have the calcium hydroxide volume, but I don't have the concentration of the calcium hydroxide volume. So let the concentration of the calcium hydroxide be X. And this is in mole per dm cube. Now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna set up my mole ratio. So this is the mole of the calcium hydroxide is to the mole of the HCl. I set it up, mole of this divided by mole of that. From the balance equation, two mole of the acid. So the acid is at the bottom. So two mole of the acid reacts to one mole of the calcium hydroxide. Very important to read your equation. On the far right, this is the actual, the actual amount that reacted. This is concentration time volume. So I want to find the concentration of calcium hydroxide. I don't have the concentration. So that is X in mole per dm cube multiplied by the volume of the calcium hydroxide. I have to convert cm cube to dm cube. And the way to do it is divide by a thousand. So that is 20.0 divided by a thousand. Next up at the bottom is my actual mole of HCl that reacted with the actual mole of calcium hydroxide. I have six cm cube. So that is 6.0 divided by a thousand change it to dm cube already. And this is multiplied, multiplied by 0 0.0153. That is the concentration of the acid. After you do all that, your job is just mathematics. 
do not change the half here because this is the more ratio of balance questions. I am just moving. I am just moving whatever at the bottom to the top there. So it becomes half time 0 0.0153 times 6.0 over 1000. I move the thing at the bottom to the top and I follow all the n equal to cv. This is mole of a mole. This is more ratio from the balance equation. This is more per my level. When I move this to the other side, I don't care about the level anymore. The level is just so that I am not lost. I read whatever I write. I follow whatever I have written and equal to CV. Now, all we have to do then is X equal to whatever is on top here. You might be the type who like to press calculator. I happen to be the type who like to rearrange everything. And then I use bracket. I use bracket, key this in, close bracket, divided by this whole thing, move to the bottom, it become the denominator. When you press your calculator like that, no one will get the wrong answer unless you didn't use bracket, unless you don't know how to rearrange equation from your primary school algebra, from your lower secondary school algebra, and this answer will be in more for DMQ. Okay, that's all the time I have for today. I've just shown you how to use this more ratio method, but do catch more of my uh, topical playlist tutorials. So uh, I already uploaded the playlist on the on the new thing, which I've uploaded onto the Google Classroom. Your job for next week is you got to try some of these small calculation questions, yeah, uh, with this method which I've shown you, or with your own method, doesn't matter. I've just shown you that this is a shortcut that my students always use, that I always teach using the students so that they can get the correct answer by setting things up properly, by doing the math properly. It's clean, it's tidy, it's neat. It always gives you the correct answer, provided you have a balance equation with the correct or ratio there and provided you did the mathematics correctly. I actually had time to go through two or three more questions with the other class just now. Uh, so you can catch what I've done with the other class as well in the recorded session in the BIBD I love uh, all level playlists, uh, you know, whenever you have time before next week. Okay, that's all the time I have for this week. Uh, sorry, we dragged on a little bit, but we started a little bit late. So that's it really for one hour. So, so yeah, I mean, Hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Go through some of those more calculation questions, yeah? Okay, you can leave now. Thank you.